What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 506 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast, Hot Tags of the Week. This is the breakdown of the current events and rumors and news and gossip and TV talk and other things that have happened in the world of pro wrestling over the past few days we feel like chatting about. I'm your host as always, Tony Mango. Joining me as always is Robert E. Felice. Tony, we're here. It's another week. How are you? Uh, skip that the way that we've been skipping it. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm doing all right. It was a pretty good week. It's an exciting time in wrestling, and I think that energizes me more than anything because it's so much of my life. When it's good or when there's stuff to look forward to, like there is all next week is a bunch of stuff to look forward to. I'm excited. Yeah, next week we're going to have a lot of discussion about two pay-per-views and Hopefully the other pay-per-views are going to be great. And potentially CM Punk. <laughs> like... CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, I mean, could be in the mix somewhere in here. We've got... I'm hoping that this next week is not one of those weeks where out of the hot tags we end up having a bunch of releases and stuff. Because thankfully, I don't know maybe if I knock on wood with this, thankfully right now at 12.23 a.m. <laughs> on August 14th when we're recording this, there isn't another whole round of releases. Roster cuts can happen at any time these days, so who fucking knows. But at least this week, we seem to be in the clear of that. We actually have a, a positive thing to announce. Two positive things, kind of. Well, a positive thing, and then one thing that's like, hey, that wasn't as bad as we thought it was, and that kind of deal. We're going to talk about AEW Rampage. We're going to go through the other TV stuff that's noteworthy or interesting or whatever. Talk about some reasons for why some of these things have been happening recently that we got a little bit of clarification behind. And as always, we want to know what you guys have to say about this. So drop a comment below. Keep the discussion going. Give us your thoughts on all these topics and your responses to what we have to say. And, you know, the usual shtick with everything on YouTube. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you want to see more, you hit the subscribe button. YouTube's been around for like 20 years. You know it by now. The uh, share button is a great way to help spread the word about this if you want to help us grow. Another way that you can help us grow is on the monetary platforms that we've got here. The applause button, the join button, the Patreon. If you can't see the join button on iOS... We still haven't figured out why that's necessarily the case, but it's probably hidden behind some kind of thing. I don't know. I'm an Android guy, so it pops up for me. But at least on my desktop, it does. So head on over to your desktop, hit the join button, take advantage of that, see the uh, bonus features and different things that we have on like the dark cast tier and everything, and the pick a poison tier. You can request different things if you want us to do it. Pick up a t-shirt or some other kind of merchandise on TeePublic and Redbubble, and share your support whatever fashion that you can. Because anything you guys do that helps keep us going, helps keep us going. That's kind of why I just said it. So, uh, Let's start with a happy thing. Happy things are good. Good things are good. I feel like almost every podcast that comes out at some point these days. But Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae are going to be having a kid. What an exciting piece of news, huh? I love this couple. I'm glad that they're having a baby. They deserve all the happiness. They seem so wholesome. I'm so happy for them. Candice Ray put out a nice Instagram post like, yeah, and I appreciate all the support and love that I've gotten since making this announcement. And I'm not going to go away yet because, you know, she joked, Indy still needs me and I still want to be there for my roster of girls. And then, unfortunately, I had to step away from the ring. But then I will be uh, back when I can, and I like that the, uh, the baby will be, she said the little one will be so worth it. And I'm like, go them. I, I'm rooting for them. Just yeah. like, God, they seem so pure. They really do seem like not only just a great couple, but just two great people. I've never had the pleasure of meeting them, but good news like that is such a relief after some of these other things. And skip into a thing on NXT for this week that is even funnier in retrospect now that we know the information behind it. That little bit on NXT where they had the uh, the date with Indy Hartwell and Dexter Loomis, and she says, uh, do you have any protection? And Indy says, oh, I'm a former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion. I don't need protection. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> it works at a whole different level at this point now. 
So good news for that stuff. That's uh, that's great. Uh, love, love to see it. Really, you do. Now, of course, that means that there's a blank spot on the roster from Candice LeRae not being able to wrestle. And while that's bad side on the fact that we won't be seeing Candice LeRae wrestle for pretty much a year, maybe somebody else steps up. And maybe this ends up being something that's good for that, like too. Gigi Dolan can be a top star. Seems like it could be. I mean, she's working her way towards something like that right now, right? With a... What's her name? J.C. Jane? J.C. Jane is her name. And that rhymes, and I didn't even mean it to. <laughs> J.C. Jane is her name. Uh, uh, Mandy's on NXT, and I like that. I like what they're doing with her. It seems weird to me that a year later... Sonya is back as an authority figure, and she bounces back and forth between heel and babyface. And Mandy's kind of full blown heel. I don't know, just a little weird to me. And then NXT, of all things. Yeah, very strange. When they were supposed to fight last year at SummerSlam. <laughs> I kind of just, in some ways, more than others, but just with the way that things have been just so chaotic lately i really want to like skip to a year from now or whatever when things just settle and we can just look back and be like what a weird couple of years because this is going yeah. back to we're not going to go down this rabbit hole all over again but this is going back to leading up to when lars sullivan and the other people were brought to the roster remember that yeah this feels like it's going back to when roman announced that he had leukemia for me even, even like, further than that at this point it's so crazy that all this stuff has happened and like i guess for me it started at like all in where it felt like oh wow it's a new show it's a new something it's exciting and then it became like wow it's a whole new company look at that and wb's never been the same well if we really want to trace it back we know where it goes back to Yep. Brock Lesnar shouldn't have beaten The Undertaker. There you me. go. <laughs> Worst timeline. <laughs> Just saying. But good timeline when it comes to Candace and Johnny. Uh, that kid's going to be so talented if uh, he or she ends up being a wrestler. Yeah, I mean, I imagine, I'm imagining all the quirkiness, all the talent. What a, what a great, what a great family. And that kid's going to be corrupted by Uncle Tommaso. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we get uh, Tommaso, Tommaso Champa's kid, yeah. yeah, a kid against uh, the Carcano kid in the future, just like some sibling rivalry type of. Uh, That's what we need it's NXT Takeover 200 or something. Like, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a better logo than they do for NXT Takeover 36. I look at that yeah. and I swear it looks like 35. They've gotten really lazy. Yeah. Now it's just. Uh, it's a three and a six in the NXT thing. There. We'll talk about NXT at some point and all of those rumors and stories. I guess that could be a hot take, couldn't it? About the idea that there's going to be changes? About the idea that it's essentially going to go back to like old school developmental? Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work because they have a TV show. They kind of can't just treat it like it's the power plant from WCW. <laughs> That's the, the weird thing to me about this whole thing is, again, NXT is on prime time on the USA Network. They're on the same time slot as Raw. It's very unless, strange to me. Unless the philosophy is, and I, I hope this isn't true because I just fundamentally disagree with it, but there are some reports that are saying this. So take it with a grain of salt. Maybe it might be, maybe it isn't. Some things are saying that Triple H is being blamed for losing the quote-unquote ratings war against AEW and that that's hurt NXT because some people are detractors of Triple H because they think that if he takes over that he's going to get rid of them. So then they're using this to undercut him and then they're making NXT look out like, oh, he failed NXT and NXT is useless, so we don't need that anymore. And then that kind of deal. So I've been like, okay, we're going to go down this rabbit hole, guys there's your warning because i've been seeing this on social media a lot like either on the one extreme it's oh triple h and the click and Shawn michaels really screwed over nxt and it's 
they started having these long drawn out matches with Gargano and Ciampa and you know it's it's all a vanity project for the click and then I see on the flip side poor Triple H you know he was royally screwed and I'm like God, calm down you know like do not blame Shawn Michaels and Triple H for the decline of NXT just because in reality here's what happened NXT was the fun American alternative to WWE and because it was the only one you had you forgave that it was under the WWE umbrella now with AEW you can kind of look at NXT and go well it is under the WWE umbrella it still kind of sucks meanwhile just two years ago Adam Cole popping up on Smackdown was one of the most fun episodes of TV in a long time. I, I think it's such a what have you done for me lately world mm-hmm. that all anybody can see is NXT really kind of sucks, doesn't it? Because that's been really lame lately, hasn't it? And it's like, that was just a pandemic. You know, that to me anyway, like that was just the pandemic started. And NXT already was in this awkward phase of like, hey, you're going from being a one-hour show that's taped a month in advance on the network to we need you two hours prime time live every week, which is a crazy adjustment in and of itself. Changes the way you film, changes the way you do TV and you build stories. And then you had a fucking pandemic on top of it. Where week to week, you don't know who's cleared because you don't know who's, you know, come into contact with COVID. And, like, that stuff weighed in on it. And not to mention, the comparison of Dynamite to NXT was only fair in our minds for the first couple of weeks. Once, once you realize that Dynamite is essentially their equivalent of Monday Night Raw. Right. Putting it up NXT up against NXT isn't fair. And I can say that because, like, look, there was a time, we can all admit, where we thought AEW would be, like, the Bullet Club, Jericho, and a bunch of people that nobody's heard of yet. Now we sit here two years later, and we're talking about potentially CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, uh, Christian is back. Andrade's over there, and... Andrade, Neville, um, who else? Who else has gone there just this year? Malachi uh, Black, Alistair Black, who just on, you know, like we're dealing with shit that we could have never imagined. So no, it's not fair to compare AEW to NXT, and I don't think like this obsession with the whole well NXT lost. Yes, they did because AEW did put on the better product. I'm not like. Saying, oh, NXT had a better product. No, AEW had a better product. But NXT was also fighting ridiculously uphill. And to throw Triple H under the bus, from a fan perspective, when I remember when uh, Reddit was, like, giving this man flowers, literal flowers sent to his office, saying, thanks for the good takeover. You know, it's like, stop. Like, stop being so fickle. Stop with the what have you done to me lately. Let this thing play out. Because no, I don't like the releases. I do think it's all scary. I do think it's wild that Ever Rise went from <laughs> curtain jerking on 205 Live to fighting Sting on AEW. But let it play out because we don't know what's happening. And yes, maybe we will look back on this and go... NXT died a really quick death, but I don't think you should be putting it in the grave just yet. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people in WWE doing those things. Oh, absolutely. There could very well be people exactly what these reports are saying that are like, and and nothing that I've read has indicated an actual person. So I don't want to speculate and say, oh, it's it's this person or that person, because especially I have no fucking idea. But Let's just say, you know, uh, John Doe. Let's just use the John Doe name. John Doe is working for Vince McMahon. 
and Triple H is very clear in like, well, we disagree about things. So if I get in charge, uh, you know, that's probably not going to be good for you and you'll probably end up losing your job. And if you get an opportunity to undercut Triple H and it ends up being like, yeah, see, that guy shouldn't be in charge, you know, whatever. I should keep my job for a lot longer. A lot of people do that kind of stuff. And if this is their opportunity to say, if Triple H wasn't running NXT, it might have beaten AEW. NXT is probably not the best thing. Then I could see Vince McMahon having that kind of influence and then deciding to do what he's been doing recently, which, to be fair as well, he's been cutting people that aren't just in NXT, so it's not like that's the case. But but if we look at it now, a lot of them... Now, this might just be happenstance because we're entering an era where NXT's been around for 10 years, but a lot of these cuts have been... NXT really guys. prominent names in it, the NXT system. You yeah, know, they're, uh, they're people Iconics, who... Ruby right. Riot, uh, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's exactly who I was going to be going to, uh, up for because it's like he really did kind of start off with NXT. He was and... the first... like they, Okay, there was the Shield, yes. But if you look at it now, Rollins and Owens are the only two NXT champions who have, like, tasted main roster, main event gold. And Rollins is the only one to have, like, done all of it. Like, Royal Rumble, Money in the Bank. One out of, like, 12 isn't the best track record. Especially if you go with, like, probably the next highest up in the line succession would be Big E. I would say Rollins, Owens, Big E. And I wouldn't even count Big E because I'd go... Uh, Biggie, he mostly just made it because of the New Day. Not a lot of that was like, oh, the NXT influence. And yeah, somebody out there will go, well, McIntyre was NXT champion. McIntyre was also Intercontinental champion 12 years ago. Right. So, yeah, no, I don't count Drew McIntyre. And like Samojo never got a world title <clears throat> on the main roster. Bobby Roode didn't get to that success, even though he could have just immediately won a world title in WWE. He could have immediately gone to Raw. He didn't need Mm -hmm. to go to NXT. A guy like an AJ Styles completely skips NXT, and Vince absolutely loves him. Alexa Bliss didn't do... Mm -hmm. didn't break ground in NXT, but has done amazingly on the main roster. We've noticed this trend for years now, where if somebody doesn't really necessarily succeed all that well in uh, NXT... Sometimes they end up doing pretty well on the main roster, and it's it keeps going back to this thing that we've been hearing for years and years and years, which at this point, when you hear it enough times and you see it enough times, you know, if it looks like a duck, if it acts like a duck, it sounds like a duck, this idea of if Vince didn't make the person, Vince doesn't get behind them, right? And it's like, well, Vince didn't make NXT, so is this now at the point where he's like, well, I don't fucking like NXT, and the plans could be literally screw it. We'll run out the clock on this USA deal with we'll give them whatever and they'll be happy with it because they do very much have that philosophy. It seems these days with we'll do whatever and you'll fucking watch it. We'll have because the rematch twenty times and you'll watch it because it's WWE and it's the brand and because they're content creation. They're not. Mm-hmm. They're not storytelling. They're not even storytelling anymore. They're content creation. They, whoever it was that got them on that mind, kind of, uh, that, that mindset, that track of saying the corporate speak stuff and saying the, the content creation and the, you know, that sort of corporate synergy nonsense type stuff it really did a number on this company because it ended up being like, well, now we believe that WWE is the brand. You know, I remember a time like a decade ago where the word brand was barely used. I remember a time where Matt Hardy for trying Mm. to brand himself was seen as the biggest fucking dork in the world. Matt Hardy brand. Yeah. For doing exactly what everybody does now. Matt Hardy was seemed like the biggest dork. Uh, Zack Ryder seemed like the biggest dork. And now it's like, this is literally the way that everybody functions. The amount of things that I've heard of just this, like, 
again, corporate speak type stuff where people go like, well, everybody's their own brand and all this. And it's like, oh, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> but well, um, it's like, uh, yeah, move on because we'll, so we'll go down this rabbit hole. The NXT side of things, I do think that it's going to be changing. I do think that they are going to care less about it. And I don't think that that's going to be good. And I think that USA is going to be upset because the numbers are going to fall. And the fans are going to be like, oh, well, screw NXT. And we've seen that happen with plenty of other shows in the past. We saw it. Remember how big and fun and interesting the cruiserweight division was at first? Yep. And everybody was like, this is amazing. This is the best in-ring competition that you'll see. And it very quickly, and I mean quickly, like within months, became, I don't watch the fucking purple show. They had Kota Ibushi and like Zack Sabre Jr., which means that they knew enough to know, hey, we should probably go for Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. and all these guys. And for that matter, the girls too. Mae Young Classic, you know, Mia Yim, Mercedes Martinez, all these women, they knew, hey, we got to get on this. Now, on the flip side of this, I... There are certain elements of the OVW FCW mindset that I like that I do think need to come back. Namely, they do need to skew younger. They do need to start skewing younger. I, I love that Balor's gotten a chance and all that, but like I want to see more people like Carmelo Hayes who are only in their early 20s you know, getting a chance to grow on WWE because John Cena and Randy Orton still look and feel like John Cena and Randy Orton because they started at like 20 something. Right. You know, Brock Lesnar has seemed like a beast forever because he literally was. He's only 25. You know, when you when I hear Randy Orton was 24, it's like, oh, no wonder there's so many stories about him being a dumb piece of shit because he's only 24 years old. Of course, he wasn't fully matured, but that's okay because you get to see him grow. Whereas, it's like, well, Karrion Cross is finally here, and holy shit, he's closer to 30. He's closer to 40 than he is to 30. And I also, we talked about this before, I agree with you about the idea that we need more characters, and it seems like the WWE is in that mindset right now, which I, there are good and bad things about some of these changes. I, I can still see mostly some bad things when it comes to, like, firing everybody and everything. I, I'm still fully on the train of, uh, I think that they want to sell to Comcast. I know that Calum disagrees, and plenty of other people do, and they're probably, you know, just as equally right for all we fucking know. I don't know. But the As far as a WWE sale, I'm looking at it like any major story, like Edge's return, like Punk's return. Yes, it's probably on the table. No, I will not see it or acknowledge it until like, <laughs> until it happens. Yeah. It's right in front of my face. But we'll just get that one day if it does happen, you know? How the way, like, some of these things... Were, remember when, like, they, the Peacock thing was just sort of like, yeah, by the way, it's going to be on Peacock in, like, a couple weeks and whatever. And it was just like, wait, what? Like, Yeah, I was like, wait, huh? Yeah. Shit, I remember the one uh, when they switched over from ECW to NXT. That happened literally week to week, didn't it? It was just sort of like, hey, by the way, in, like, two weeks or so, we're not going to be ECW anymore. We're going to be a brand new thing called NXT. And I remember writing articles because I was writing at that point of what do you do with Yoshitatsu? Is he in this NXT brand? Do you bring him to another roster? Like that kind of thing. And being completely confused about that. And, you know, I remember Vince just came, literally just came out. It was like, Hey, uh, uh ECW has gone. And, uh, two weeks, we're going to give you something new. And they didn't even tell you. They were just like, We'll give you something new, and then the next week they're like, it's called NXT, and here is Daniel Bryan, and you're like, oh, this is different. And I remember my first reaction was, ew, NXT? Hate it. Because <laughs> I've never liked the NXT thinking, name. Like, I, thought that, I thought it was cool, because it's like, alright, it's different. You're not calling it, like, WCW, you know what I mean? Like, it's, at least you're your own thing. 
I was wondering what does NXT stand for other than it's next, but like, you know, edgy. Yeah. But anyway, uh, let's talk about, we've got all these releases that have been happening and everything that we just kind of touched on a little bit, but I got some information about some of these things. According to at least Dave Meltzer, which again, of course, take it with a grain of salt. The release for Bronson Reed was they watched his tryout matches over these past couple of weeks, weren't impressed enough, and instead of doing what you would think that they would potentially do, which is, okay, well then maybe he's not ready, let's keep him in NXT, instead they, if it's true, had the philosophy of, no, I don't think that's going to go anywhere, so he probably won't go to the main roster and be worth it, so... We're going to look five to ten years in advance and think it's probably not going to be worth the investment. Let's just release him. First of all, when I was looking five to ten years in advance, I picked uh, picked Bronson to read number three. Number uh, (laughs) ten on my uh, fantasy draft there. I, uh, I get it. I understand it. I do think that they need to be better about communicating... Even if it's shitty, right? I think they need to be better at communicating with talent. Hey, we're winding you up. Like we're gonna we're gonna kind of move in a different direction instead of just going, hey, do ten hours of media promoting NXT and a potential move to band roster, and we're gonna release you in two days. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I do think. And I'm not in their corporate structure, so what the fuck do I know? But I do think that they need to be better about that. Oh, the communication issues are definitely something that's been a thing for a while, because look at the whole garbage bag situation. Yeah. When a company is so big like that, you end up having people who are superfluous to their jobs, and then they don't do their jobs, and they're the glorified manager types where they just kind of collect paychecks and don't actually supervise, you know? I I understand that, but it's also like, this is what an actual brand does. You know, like, if you're going to keep calling yourself a brand, you got to, your communication has to be on point, even if it's shitty. And that's, we talk about things we say on the podcast all the time. Say what you mean, mean what you say. (laughs) Part of that is, even if it's shitty, you're better off saying it. You know what I mean? And these talents deserve to know that, hey, they might not have a job. Because the one thing that I'm sure they were all comfortably talking about to their friends would be, oh, I'm always going to have a job because I work for WWE. And now you don't. You know, now uh, Bronson Reed's got to figure out something else to do. And I think that that sucks. Even if it's just for the benefit of the people themselves, I see no negatives to telling people things like, and maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but so far nobody's indicated that this is the case. I see no problem saying, we are trimming a lot of the roster. Many people will be released. We have no indication of exactly who right now. We have some ideas. We will not tell you who, but be on your best behavior. Do your best work. Improve in the ways that we're telling you. You are not just coasting. And if you get people that do the whole thing where they go, fuck it, I don't want to stay here anymore. I don't want to resign my contract. Then you go. Okay, either cool, go. either one of the two directions. Either you really like them and you go, no, we want you to stick around and let's negotiate and let's talk about things. Or you go, all right, then, see ya. But and it if, seems like that's the direction they're in right now. But because, again, the lack of communication and this stuff just seemingly appearing out of nowhere, that's why people are like, well, what the fuck? And it's really confusing when it comes to people that were just signed in October. Like, you mean to tell me that So it, it, if it was one story here and there, you know, like maybe they just, not to single them out, but like 
Maybe they were like, ah, we're really not seeing anything, any positive growth on August Gray. And then you release them. Or maybe Brandy Lauren is just not working through the PC all that well. Or Kurt Stallion or whatever. But there's been like oh, about a dozen people, it seems. That you know what like, I think is fucked up? Hired. And I think maybe in hindsight, this is why they're starting to trademark new names again. Because they trademarked Kurt Stallion. Now that poor guy can't use it. You think this is like a calculated just to screw everybody else up kind of thing? Well, no, he's going to go by Stallion Rogers. I actually, I think the opposite about it. I think that's why they're starting to make people come up with new names so that they don't screw you over. Because it worked out for a while. Like Adam Cole, you know, got to be Adam Cole, which was super cool. But uh, Kurt Stallion sucks to be him, you know? What's his uh, name he's going to go by? Stallion, Stallion Rogers? Stallion Rogers, yeah. Huh. Just release the trademarks, you know? Like, what are you going to do with it? You're going to really they keep this current stallion the trademark Chelsea for Green, didn't they? That stuff, um, again, we've talked about that before, but, like, I don't understand the idea of trying to trademark somebody's real name. You just, you should not be able to do that fundamentally. Yeah, and they let it go, thankfully. But, like, it's crazy, isn't it? Even that, though, it's probably a communication issue because there's Vince McMahon's not looking at all the fucking trademarks. Yeah, there's no way he can be. Laura Dean's Midland is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Because <laughs> oh, I've had my sh- uh, share of copyright things. I know that that's one of their uh, lawyers on retention. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think that this, if this report about Bronson Reed is true, then we will see more releases coming up soon. And honestly, if that is true, we could see releases of these people that have been over these past couple of weeks. We might see yeah. Aaliyah released. I don't think, see, I think here's where I'm thinking with her. I think she's in the camp of like Carmela and Alexa Bliss. She never moved anywhere on NXT. I bet you main roster shoots her up. I don't know that. Alexa stopped. <laughs> But it is kind of strange that she has been having as many tryouts and she still hasn't come up to the roster the She's same way. She's technically one on main roster TV. She beat Dakota Kai on main event this week. That was on main event? That was on the air, main event. I thought that was just a dark match. Oh. So maybe that's a step up. But then again, Bronson Reed, he was on main event too. Yeah, but Dakota Kai is challenging the NXT champion. And they put Aaliyah over her. Aaliyah yeah. hasn't won anything on NXT TV ever, I think. <laughs> She's won more than one match, at the very least. But well, not, not too many. But um, I don't know. It's something to, to keep in mind. You know, Watch out for that, because maybe if they're having a tryout, if they don't nail the tryout, that might be the sink or swim type of a deal. So it's interesting. Here's something about just that the way that things happen in WWE that is an interesting story. Another thing, this actually came out from an interview. We know why Otis Dozovic and Tucker Knight just became Otis and Tucker. According to him, Tucker, I should say, they trimmed those names because they didn't like how long it took the announcer to say their names. Tucker Knight and Otis Dozovic Heavy Machinery. I get it, and at the same time, I think, what a nitpicky, stupid thing. I I, I get it. I, I'm sorry. It is nitpicky, it is dumb, but I get it. If the names are really long, I can see shortening them. Like, Dozovic is kind of long. I don't think it's really all that long. Like... Maybe I would just want to call him Otis. Like maybe call him Dozer or something. Like I don't know. They need to get more creative with these names, because then you end up with just hey, it's Tucker. Oh boy, I'm really afraid of Tucker. You know, like well, see, Tucker Knight. Three syllables. But maybe it's Tucker Knight. 
and Otis Dozovic heavy machinery. Maybe that's too long for it. Which is weird because how often does WWE do the whole thing where it's like the, the tag team name we're not going to say, but we're going to say both the singles names because in their mind, two singles people is better than a tag team. The Miz and John Morrison as the Miz and John Morrison, not any kind of name that you can make them up. And you've got like, of course, Reginald Thomas becomes Reginald, becomes Reggie. Pretty soon he's just going to be Reg. Just to get it even shorter. Matt Riddle's just Riddle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then you get like names that were a lot longer. And what makes them okay? Like, if Tucker Knight being three syllables is too long, how did they not at some point say, oh, Cedric Alexander? Needs to stop. Maybe they did. Because it's were like, well, We can't call him Alexander. But they could call him like said. With the way that they've been doing things. We got Eric and Ivar. After we knew who they were. You know. They still don't know how what? to pronounce Omas. Hey, what were Eric and Ivar in NXT? Were they hands in a row? Yep. Oh my. Wow, that's weird. So, Hanson, Ivar... Row, Eric, he actually bumps up a syllable. I'd give him credit for this. I had completely forgotten that they did have their proper names in NXT. And I just think that that's like the idea of Otis and Tucker heavy machinery. Well, we got to shorten it or whatever. Are you? Like, for that split second, that extra second that it's going to take for the announcer to say that, is that so necessary that you need to cut that out? Do you need that split second for an extra plug from the commentary team to just start getting into the nonsense that they end up saying over and over again? If you're that concerned about, like... The thing is, extra seconds of a TV show, and it's like, okay, extra seconds of a TV show can be a commercial break, but if it's footage of them walking to the ring and you're going to stay on this for a minute, and it just stops the commentary team from talking, and just, we're talking not even a full second here. Like... Otis Dozovic and Tucker Knight, Heavy Machinery... Maybe at most it was three seconds for me to say that. Otis and Tucker, heavy machinery. Two and a half seconds, maybe? <laughs> you know? Um, maybe maybe he just heard it once and just it rubbed him the wrong way, you know? Like I think that that's what it is. And th- sometimes that's all you need. I think that that's one of those things that we've heard from the years about like a finicky it got in Vince's head type of thing. And I think that that's happening with all those things. I think that that's sometime somebody announced Elias Samson and he was just kind of like, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today to hear the name Samson. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Which you can't really plan for. And that shouldn't be that, you know, that kind of a decision being made like that. But then they have almost a superhero, Nikki A.S.H. That's awful. And they have been announcing her as that every single time. That's long as hell. Almost a superhero, Nikki A.S.H. Shouldn't it be almost a superhero, Nikki Cross? Or just Nikki Cross? Or Or Nikki A.S.H. You shouldn't say almost a superhero, Nikki. Almost a superhero. Right. And if you're worried about the time frame, you're taking up extra time for that. (laughs) by <laughs> breaking the uh, the synapses, right? Yeah, it's like it's so crazy, you know. Like, I I really think that these little quirks, as much as they make Vince who he is, like it's almost like you, like you have quirks, and I, I we've seen them and they're fun. Right. <laughs> like, it's just like, come on, man, are you serious? My sister called me out on uh, the, that I use the phrase at some point all the time. 
Doesn't that kill you? And uh, I was just like, oh, I know. I've known that for a long time. That's been one that's been years and years in the making at some point, whatever like that. It boils down to that. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, my friend last time she was here, I kept saying, well, here's the thing. And she goes, you have a lot of, you have a lot of things. You said a lot. And I go, I tried to tell you. Because I'm aware of this after we've done the shows so much. <laughs> yeah, like, so we all have our quirks, you know, but Vince is just happened to be so bizarre. Just that that gets on his uh, nerves. Some, you know, oh my God, he shouldn't be Big E Langston anymore. He should just be Big E. We got to cut out that Langston. It's going to save us a little bit of time. What do you mean it's Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart? That takes too long. Just Knox and Shotzi. There you go. And if people end up accidentally saying Nazi, then fuck. <laughs> I can see clearly now the whole thing with Knox and Shotzi being like, "Oh, that sounds edgy. Like you're not. You don't need the black heart. You're you're just Shotzi, you know." And Tegan Knox. Well, let's call you Knox. Like you got. It sounds like Nasty Boy's name, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. And you know what? I it, uh, I got to imagine this is happening at some point. It, it either happened for a split second or it's subconsciously happening or whatever. I got to imagine that Knox and Shotzi get on there and people are like, oh, they replaced Ruby Riot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? Specifically. And like, this is not a dig at anybody. Not a dig at Ruby, not a dig at Shotzi. But specifically, I can see them going, we made a mistake. We need that kind of vibe again. Give us Shotzi. Mm-hmm. Let's get give us the the punk edgy girl that we can tap into that market with. Because Liv Morgan's not punk and edgy enough. She's got those tears, but you know, different story. Liv Morgan should be so much more. No, she should be so much more on these shows. Anyway, that's uh, Otis and Tucker. So, yeah, I am not that type to necessarily trim that kind of stuff down. You're not going to hear me say, you know, well, in the future, the uh, pay-per-view point is just going to be called PPVP. <laughs> you know? The viewpoint. Yeah, not happening with that. Of course, I did buy the URL smarkout.com to make it easier, so... Not only can you just go to smarkout.com and it'll go to smarkout moment, but you know it's be- funny. Did you say you're not going to call it PPVP, but you did buy PWPOV, right? That was eventually going to be a different thing, but I ended up deciding not to do it, and then I've just owned the domain since then. But part of the reason that I did uh, buy smarkout.com was literally so I didn't have to type out the word moment. <laughs> like I. Don't type smartoutmoment.com when I go to my website. I type smartout.com because it saves me that extra second. But, you know, then again, I'm not a billionaire and I can't afford those seconds. If you want to make sure that happen, though, then I do the Patreon. <laughs> Let's talk about some uh, Keith Lee stuff. Keith oh. Lee, after how many months now? Uh, seven months? It was in February, so it was five months. Five months, we finally know what was going on with him, and we had a couple things that we were speculating about, and one of them ended up basically being true. We had thought, hey, maybe it's something with the thing that we've heard before with like Mark Henry and such, where maybe they told him that he needed to lose some weight for some kind of health thing. We thought maybe it was a creative thing. We thought maybe he had like a loss in the family, but. One of the things that we kept going back to was it's a little too suspicious that COVID is a thing and that he seemed to have contracted it right before going away for a while. And they pretty much only if they the two things they don't talk about are concussions and COVID. So it's probably one of those two and that kind of deal. He revealed after now that he's returned, thankfully, what was going on. And it was basically he had contracted COVID and he was having some heart issues to go along with it. An inflammation in the heart. And he had been told he could not even train because they were worried if he overexerted himself too much, he would just 
die on the spot. Which is awful. And that's scary. <laughs> I like, can imagine we're... the things going through his mind of just kind of like, well, my job is kind of to do way more than just train, you know? And uh, he mentioned that Mia Yim eventually contracted COVID herself, but only because she had spent so much time taking care of him. And he'd mentioned that it cost him, it cost her, rather, the Royal Rumble spot. Right. Um, Which, you know, hats off to Mia Yim for being like, I'm going to take care of him despite me potentially getting COVID and causing, yeah, like, you know, some issues with that. Like, that's what you want in a significant other. You know, wrestling isn't everything. It's, for a lot of us, it's our favorite thing, but it's not everything. And I... I had to watch that video. I had to do an article on it. I'm so glad he's healthy. It's one of the scariest things I've ever written about in my life to think he could stop and die. Right. You know, like, I'm just glad he's healthy. I hope that it it stays that way. And fuck COVID, man. Yeah. <laughs> so many times we could ring that bell, yeah. And they released this theme finally. Yeah, they did. I that's up. That. I've listened to that so many times this past couple of days. So that's, it's not good news, of course, that all these things had happened, but it's good news to hear that that stuff is at least for now in the past and that he's gotten over that hump and that we know what's gone on. We've got some closure behind some of those things because I was in the camp of a lot of other people where I was just sort of like, I kind of just want to know because if this is something super duper duper serious, like I want to stop being concerned about it because it's out of the realm of anything I can do or influence or even talk about or whatever. And if it's not something that's serious, then can we just move the fuck on kind of thing? Like sometimes you need a little bit of that. And I can understand why he didn't necessarily say anything because he was saying like, well, I wasn't sure what was really going on, you know? But I don't know, maybe uh, another lesson for everybody in the future. But some of these things just take everything seriously and don't take anything for granted. Do all that. And at the same time, transparency can be big with some things. And yeah, I think that there's probably aggravation that could have been saved on all party sides. If like some kind of a statement would have been put out there about like, I'm dealing with some complications I'll let you know more about it when I know. Like, you know what I mean? I think Maybe that... they wanted to take care of all parties involved. Because, you know, you can't just say I've contracted COVID because then it's for well, why is WWE doing shows? True. You know, when WWE is just trying to do their best to keep the lights. I have to, No, that's the wrong phrase. To continue keeping their... Putting smiles on faces. <laughs> no, I don't want to say. I don't want to say that. I'm trying to think of, like the actual things that they do, like continue you know, operations, keeping uh, John the light guy. He still got a job, you know, and stuff like that. So I understand it. It's just that it sucks to know how grave things could have been. So TV stuff is the only other stuff that I've got to talk about. I don't think that I'm missing anything other than the stories uh, that would go along talk with about it. about CM Punk real quick. Because CM Punk is doing media for Heels. And it just so happens that, you know, he's also rumored to be joining AEW. So he had said, um, he joked about it. No, he didn't joke, but he says he's got a, a screening of Heels in Chicago next week. When, when asked what he's doing on the 20th. And uh, he talked about, you know, his first talks with Tony Khan. And he's like, look, I'm of an era where everybody was a money guy. And everybody was going to have TV and had the next big product. I actually want to get the actual quote um, from the great Jeremy Lambert over at Fightful.com. He's on the Sunday Night Spin Event podcast. And he says... First of all, when Darby talks about the best in the world, he says, best in the world, that could be anybody. That's Daniel Bryan, right? That's my assumption. When I hear the best in the world, I think Bryan. And then he says, I think Darby Allen is great. You'll like this one, Tony. Everybody in the wrestling world needs to never do a dive again 
Because you can't do them better than Darby. If you watch Darby wrestle, he looks like he's trying to murder somebody. It doesn't get any better than that. Stop doing dives. Agreed. And we're talking about Tony Khan. He goes, I talked to Tony in 2019. My perspective on this, and I said this to his face, I'm a guy who constantly heard, I have money, I have TV. I heard that once or twice a year for 15 to 20 years. I've gotten bounced checks from those people. You watched it happen, especially after ECW folded. Everybody was restarting ECW. It always seems like somebody is like, we're going to start up and compete with Vince. I always thought that came from a bad spot. If you want to start a wrestling company, you should focus on yourself. I'm more of a, I more or less took a wait and see approach. I'm not interested in pro wrestling in that respect. We're here. We're talking about heels. It could be bad luck that I got this role because it's set in the world of pro wrestling, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm focused on being an actor. That is the best explanation I've ever heard him give as to why he didn't just go to TNA or go to AEW. Because it's true. He's like, how many times are we going to do this thing where it's like, oh, we're competing with Vince. How many times have we heard that Mm -hmm. as fans? Hell, how many times have we heard that from the same companies? Like, how many times has TNA been like, this is the game-changing thing that's going to make us do, (laughs) you know? And it's like, AEW, to their credit, didn't flat out say, we're competing with Vince. Well, they kind of did, because they did the whole, like, we're the alternative. Right, but they didn't, like, they weren't like, oh, we're going to be WCW. They just happened to actually do it. (laughs) <laughs> you know, they didn't happen to get on TNT and all that stuff. But I think that's great. And CM Punk also said in a different interview with uh, TV Insider, I think the older stuff is better. I think it's part, it's partly unfortunate that WWE owns the super good libraries in pro wrestling. I think that stuff is classic, and they don't even put it on their network. I want to watch Austin Idol versus Jerry Lawler in Memphis, I do think the landscape of pro wrestling generally needs a kick in the dick. I think we are about there. I think there are people out there stirring the pot and causing trouble in a good way. It's a fun world. There's nothing like it. Pro wrestling gets crapped on by a number of people, but when it's done on a high level and it's really good, there's nothing better. Is that not the most positive thing mm. he said about pro wrestling in years? Yeah. Seems like he's uh, got his passion a little bit reunited for this new project of AEW, uh, CW. <laughs> uh, look, I can't wait to see it. It's exciting. I can't wait to see Brian do shit if he is going to AEW. It's all exciting. And that's kind of the fun that we're going to talk about with the TV stuff. So go back to, just for the sake of you know timeline, go back to Monday Night Raw. We saw basically the most interesting thing that happened throughout Raw, at least from my perspective, was playing around with the idea of RK Bro. Oh, yeah. They bookended the TV show with Randy Orton and Riddle, which is interesting when you have a WWE title match that's said to feature Goldberg at SummerSlam, and you're just bookending your show with the tag titles, kind of. But not even like back. a tag team title match, but like this is kind of we're feuding around these titles sort of things. Right. And Randy's back and it's been seven weeks. That shocked me. He looked really like he was happy to be back. Yeah. And because he's back in front of people. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was probably very excited and he fought AJ Styles in a great match. Told Riddle, hey, I don't want to team with you. You know, but sure enough, by the end of the night, they're hugging because Riddle helped him beat AJ. And then he RKO'd Riddle. Like, everybody saw it coming. Didn't make it any less great. He RKO'd Riddle. He seemed to, like, do it from a place of love. Like, yeah. all right, now we're even, you son of a bitch. Like, mm-hmm. Which a lot of people, of course, are taking that as, well, did the team split or whatever? They made it a point on commentary to say, 
I think they're still together, though. Yeah. And uh, apparently Byron John Saxon. Cena afterward did the whole thing and they ended up hugging it out again, you know. Yeah, John Cena came out and they all hugged. Because John Cena is a peacemaker. I don't know if you know that to me. Yeah, and, and he's uh, one of the best parts of that movie. <laughs> he definitely is. Um, and they did that, and I thought that was pretty exciting. I will say I am not excited in the slightest by the Raw Women's Championship picture. I like what Nikki is doing, right? And I tweeted this out. Follow me on Twitter, at DudeFelice. I, I said, Nikki is probably better off on SmackDown because her gimmick is clearly aimed at children. And it's 1030 on a school night. And she's just popping up now. Put her on SmackDown. It's on Friday. It's free TV. It attracts more kids. She'll do better on that show. And I don't see anything wrong with her being a, a kid's character. Like, there needs to be something for everybody. That's partially why John Cena is so huge today, because even the kids that are just 16, 17 can go, John Cena was when my life was simpler. Yeah. And I was only eight playing with toys, you know? And so I think a kid's character is good, just not in this angle. Yeah, I'm Charlotte not, Flair, I love it. Ripley thing is, boring and that that's not on the characters it's just like you're not giving them anything exciting to say or do it's just going through the motions and people's chant for becky lynch every time they get bored now Mm -hmm. and it'll happen at SummerSlam. hopefully the triple threat match will start people will be chanting for becky lynch and that's uh, that's not good for those three talented women, but at the same time, it's just more indicative of well, you're not really doing anything. It's you know, Charlotte and Rhea fought however many times, and you're like, well, do that again. But this time we've got Nikki in there, and we'll talk about that next week. Um, we got more even Marie and Alexa and Dewdrop stuff. We got Karen Crosby, Jeff Hardy, um. Oh, we do have a thing with Cross beat the heels, Jeff Hardy. He kept <laughs> trying to put his feet on the ropes and shit. We did get a thing with Elias. He said uh, he burned the guitar. He said Elias is dead. Well, you think he's going to be the drifter? I have what no idea where they're going with this, actually. I almost jokingly asked my boss, I was like, hey, is he getting released? Because that, that's a kind of a cool way to write him off. <laughs> that's just how you write him off. Dude, that, look, that'd be kind of a cool way to do it. He ended the character. Elias' daddy threw the guitar in the fire. That's a good way to write him off. But they'll probably cut his hair. And like, now he's the artist formerly known as Elias. <laughs> but then that's yeah. a, a longer name and then will hate it. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, he will cut his hair. Oh, he'll definitely cut his hair. Shave his beard, and be the artist formerly known as Elias. I don't know about the artist thing, but the cutting the I'm hair. I'm tweeting it. That's how confident I am, so I can go. Oh, you see, I have sources. The sources are the voices in my head because <laughs> it just popped up. Like, I do agree about the haircut, the beard possibly, but maybe not. I don't know, because. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Beards didn't become a thing until Game of Thrones became as popular of a show. Am I right? I so I don't know. This is more like, of like a fanboys anonymous tangent, but I'm going somewhere with it for the wrestling fans. Okay. Trust me. I, I think it's like it could have been a Game of Thrones thing. One day I looked around and everybody had a beard. Yeah, I'm actually looking to shave mine. Like, I I think I'm at a point. Maybe it's all the bond watching or stuff. But I'm like, you know, maybe it's time to go clean cut again. Like everybody is doing the beard thing. I so I get that vibe of like, eh, hey, let's do something else. Over these years, I've never had the urge to grow a giant beard. And if you do, it's perfectly fine. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But. It's something that I noticed however many years ago, and I was just kind of like, everybody keeps talking about Game of Thrones, and it seems like that's the thing where everybody's got these big beards, and now that's 
that's a thing where everybody just has these beards. And it reached a point where I had counted like three people on the roster didn't have beards in some fashion. Whether it was like a smaller beard, like a Wade Barrett type of thing, or if it was like a full blown, like Braun Strowman type beard, everybody had some kind of facial hair. Yeah. And I think maybe in the same way that like they're going back to the old style of, okay, we did the wrestlers wrestler thing for like five years. Now let's try to go back to what we used to do. Maybe they're going to be like, hey, let's. Like, not everybody needs a beard. You know? And maybe it's just a matter of, well, if everybody has it, then I'm going to not do it. And then, you know, kind of stand out from the pack or whatever. But, well, if we're talking about hair and trimming things and taking care of all that kind of stuff, then we need to tell you about our sponsors that have been sponsoring us for the past few months, Manscaped. If you don't know what Manscaped is, not only should you head over to manscaped.com and check it out, but... While you're over there and you want to pick something up, you got to use a promo code. And we'll tell you about that in a second. But first, we have to tell you what Manscaped is all about. So Manscaped are the world's best in men's grooming products. They have a variety of products that are focused on primarily shaving and trimming everything down around your crotch. Your balls are going to thank you for everything that's happening there. It's not so much about the beard, but you know what? I mean... Hey, look, you can get the lawnmower 4.0 and use it for your beard, too. I actually used yeah. it for my uh, beard before I used it for anything else just to try that out because I have a bunch of different shavers. And, you know, I mean, that did the job for that. And that's something that I've had some other ones before where I've trimmed around like my ears and it's cut my ears because it's just, you know, it's the way that some of these things are. Some of these things are pretty cheap and everything. And their advanced skin safe technology was something that. I was very interested to test out without being too crazy about it. I'm not Darby Allen. I'm not going to just like, you know, go a little too Mick Foley nuts and try to cut myself or something. But yeah, we're not getting nuts with our nuts. And that's exactly why you need that skin safe <laughs> technology. Yeah, And you know what? It works for that. So, you know, we keep talking about this idea of going to Manscaped and trying this out and using that for trimming around your balls and everything. But you don't have to if you have a beard. And you want to try to use the Manscaped products, you can use it for that just as well, if not even better when it comes to some of those things. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. And while you're over on Manscaped.com, use the promo code SMARK, and you're going to be giving yourself a good deal there because you're going to get 20% off and free shipping for whatever you order on the website, whether it is something like the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer or it's just like the nail clippers or it's the different... Uh, deodorants and uh, toners and everything that they have along that side of things. Maybe you want to pick up the travel bag or something. You know, that's something that could be really useful. I These have are three. Pick up the travel bag. You have three of the travel bags. <laughs> yeah. Where the hell are you going? You need three travel bags. Well, because because you, you buy the one legitimately before you start podcasting, and then you get free things. And then you do the <laughs> then you do the stuff with the performance packages where you can get multiple things and save yeah. a little bit of money and you know. You, you know what I really find useful is the crop mop. Because listen, it is summer, it does get sweaty down there. Sometimes you just need a little pick me up, and I think the crop mops are really useful and it's something people might not think about picking up, but you should because it really does take care of everything down there. We have been touting them for a long while, and that's for good reason, because we actually give them our thumbs up and our seal of approval. So if you've been on the fence when you've been hearing about this and you're kind of getting where you're like, well, maybe I'll try something or whatever, we say give it a shot. 20% off and free shipping. What do you have to lose? You're going to like what you get. We uh, wouldn't be promoting them if we didn't feel that way, because... Why would we lie to you? We don't lie. We tell you the truth. Good things are good. We mean what we say. All the other things that we say a million times over and over again. So whether it's something along the lines of the trimmer stuff where you want to just legitimately pick up a t-shirt because the t-shirt is one of the most comfortable t-shirts that I have. I wear it all the time and I really recommend that as well. But, um, you know, Manscaped is where they are in the field for a reason. You don't get to that level without being able to be as good because, you don't hear about all these other companies, do you? I can't name another company that would be uh, on par with Manscaped. So check it out. 
go to manscaped.com. Pick up some of the things that they have on over there. You're going to be helping yourself out. You're going to be helping Smart Out Moment out because anybody that uses that promo code goes to show them, you know what? Smart Out Moment's where we sent you. That's where you got that kind of uh, thing going on. So if you do, let us know. Tell us what you think about the products and everything. Tell Manscaped that we sent you. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do some kind of comprehensive review <laughs> of some things down the line. And if you are Elias and you are thinking about shaving that beard or trimming that hair or anything, you should pick up something from Manscaped as well. Use the promo That's code right. SMART. You're probably rich enough that you don't need to use it, but everybody could use it, right? That's right, because that's taking care of your most important instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you, of course, to Manscaped for sponsoring this episode. And thank you for everybody for uh, whatever you guys end up picking up. Heading on over to the NXT side. Of the- Actually, well, was there anything else on Monday Night Raw you were interested in talking about? I didn't think so. But. Uh... No, I think we we hit everything from Raw. Uh, the Lily winking thing, it happened. Mm. Yeah, I'm over it. I don't know if I'll ever be over it. <laughs> Just be super dramatic about it. Uh, NXT, we got, you know, Ember Moon was taken out of her match and replaced by Dakota Kai. You think there's anything more to that? Or do you think it's just little oddball injury? According to Fightful Select... She it's a lot of ball injury. She wasn't cleared. I know that when I saw it, I got concerned. But I think we're just a little on edge right now, you know? I got concerned that she had gotten released. Yeah, that's what I meant. Because there were reports from Russell Votes about the idea that like tension was really high and everything, and somebody had pointed out that she is still probably technically on a main roster contract. So she probably has a higher contract than what the NXT side of things is probably worth in their mind. And I was like, well, maybe she kind of made us think about things and said, like, this is ridiculous. If you're going to just let me go, you better let me know and I'll just leave. And then they probably were like, all right, then fuck you. Like, I deal. But if she was injured, then OK, then she's injured. That sucks. Yeah, Hopefully I would it's... hate it if she got released. I think although, like, I would love to see her run wild elsewhere. Cause well, what you gonna she, do when she runs wild <laughs> elsewhere? Because she was one of the best. You know, when she came in, I was so excited that she finally made it to WWE, and then they kind of they did the WWE thing of you know we're not gonna use you much. I think she'd be better off, but she hasn't got released as far as we know. So it's another discussion for another day. We got uh, some Ilya Dragon stories to talk about. <laughs> yeah, okay, so for those who are just like, why did he just do that? Because <laughs> that's the way they say it on NXT UK. That's how they used to back when Andy Shepard was doing the announcing. It, it, and Andy Shepard, he doesn't do the ring announcing anymore, which is unfortunate. That man, Andy Shepard. <laughs> but I, sometimes we just, when watching NXT UK, I'll just voice message Tony and say, Ilya... That's a great name. That and the Jinne are the two best ones when it comes to that, but nothing beats the kind of thing. (laughs) Fanny Shepard's out there listening. That's fucking great. We're not teasing you for anything other than we really like it. But uh, I can't at this point type or see or say. Dragonov's name without thinking of that because it's just so burned in my brain. If I say just like Ilya Dragonov, I'm just like, <laughs> like <laughs> and it's even to the point that Caroline's like, oh, that's the guy that you do that fucking voice for. <laughs> it's like a it's a, that and mojito. It's that, <laughs> mojito. <that's kinda> <laughs> Uh, they had some stuff there. He had a match with Pete Dunn. Uh, Boa was out without Zia Lee, who has had some tryout matches. You think that they're gonna split that up and bring Zia to the main not. roster? Shawn Michaels was just saying how that was one to look out for this year in NXT, and uh, that would be a shame. We got a semi final match in the NXT breakout tournament Odyssey Jones beating Trey Baxter. At this point, it's uh, Odyssey Jones against what Carmelo Hayes. And who's he up against? I'm blanking on that. 
Is it Briggs? No, I think the Briggs. I think the Briggs lost. This might go out. I'm really losing track of how some of these things have played out. Just these weeks turn into months, and these months turn into years, and these days turn that into years. Ta- that is how time works, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's Odyssey Jones. I do think Carmelo might be on the on the other end of the spectrum, though. Yeah, it's it's uh, Duke Hudson against yeah, Carmelo Hayes. Because I think it's Jones and Hayes in the in the uh, finals. Hudson, I could see them doing Hudson against Jones, but it kind of all depends. Because, like, see, right now we've got Carrying Cross as the champion. And we will talk next week about predictions when it comes to takeover. But you got to assume the winner of this is probably going to challenge for the NXT championship at some point. They might not. They might fight for the North American title or something. But Samoa Joe is a baby face. And I can't see Samoa Joe versus Duke Hudson being a thing. But I could see Hayes or Jones in either a babyface match or against a carrion cross just for the sake of it sort of deal. Yeah, I can definitely see Jones either getting pushed to the moon on NXT or going straight to the main roster because they've been having to do a lot of tryouts. Yeah, it's kind of, I'm kind of getting that feeling a little bit too that he might just go to the main roster. And if that's the case, put Carmelo Hayes over, let Jones go to the main roster, put him over strong, let him, like, defeat, I don't know, Nakamura for the IC title. Oops, spoiler. Uh, and Or do something like that. Let it be Sheamus, you know? Do something like that. Let him just go straight up to the main roster. I still don't know the lyrics to his theme, but it's catchy. So that's, that's something important. that like they'll probably just botch and change as soon as he goes to the main roster. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, we got clarification about the two out of three falls match. We'll talk about that a little bit more next week. Uh, Gigi Dolan. We got LA Knight with a squash basically against Andre Chase, the guy who was in the NXT breakout tournament or at least hovering around it. I think he was in it. Yeah, he lost to Odyssey Jones in the first round. And that quickly, of course, like... You know, ah, there you go. He's just dropped out. That sort of deal. Yep. Pulling a jumping Jeff Farmer there. Yep. <laughs> and it's... I'm... So we've talked a little bit about NXT. And I'm reserving judgment until I see how all things play out. But it definitely doesn't have the same vibe that it used to. No, it doesn't. It's still probably my favorite show per week. But... You need to watch more Dynamite. Well, let's talk about Dynamite. So, on Dynamite this week, Wardlow fails to take Chris Jericho out, and we get the confirmation that the MJF and Chris Jericho match is not going to be happening at all out. It's going to be happening on Dynamite. So, I'm not a fan of the stipulations. I think they're weak. I think it makes MJF look dumb. That he's just like, I can name anything I want. I can make you fight the entire pinnacle for two hours and then come out and beat your ass. And I'm just going to say, you don't get your theme song, and you don't get the Judas effect. Right. The thing, I understand it. You know, it's very simple storytelling. And Jericho recently stated that he's all about stories, and he doesn't care about who his last match is against. And he might not even tell you when his last match is. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but MJF, it's just like, yeah, you don't get your theme song. And it's like, okay, but the crowd will probably sing it anyway. And they'll be like, look at how over Chris Jericho is. And you don't get the juice effect really bothers me because Jericho's had a 30-year career, right? In the 30-year career, he's had at least three other finishers in the Lion Salt, the Walls of Jericho, slash Lion Hammer, and the Codebreaker that have all put many other many of the best people you could ever imagine. The Rock, Stone Cold. Uh, Triple H, all of them have gone down to be moved, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, you don't get the juice effect though. It just feels weak. Like I feel like he could have said, "I'm putting you back in a cage 
with me and all of the pinnacle. And you don't get to have the inner circle with you or you both I, your hands are tied behind your back. You have to wear a blindfold. Yeah. You know, any of those kind anything, of deals. Just anything. And Jared could still overcome the odds and win. But like this seems a lot more doable. And plus it's a rehash of what Max did with Moxley, where he's like, and you can't use the dirty deeds. Or sorry, wow. Or uh, you can't use the paradigm shift. And it's like, but he did anyway, and he won. And Jericho will probably use either that or the ball bat or the code breaker or the breakdown or the lion salt or the was Jericho or anything because he's Chris Jericho and he's got a million <laughs> tricks up his sleeves. You know, he'll do, he'll be like, he hits the move and he's like, no, it's the Judas effect. A F E F E F E F E F E <laughs> that's what it's I would the do. Other elbow, and it's that's, that's the exactly. Out of that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so stupid, but it made me laugh. Um, that's so dumb, but it's like you know what? It painted that I laugh. I pop. Some other stuff that we had seen on there. I mean, there's not really much for me to talk about with dynamite it was just sort of like oh, this match was kind of fun this match was sort of good that that kind of thing but like i can't tell you what brian cage and ricky starks were talking about it wasn't super enthralling promo uh cage doesn't have a good delivery he was like you want to meet man to man well that's not gonna work because i'm a machine it's like okay pal. um i think good brothers and dark order had a great match Stu Grayson is so good. Evil Uno is so good. I am glad that they're getting a little bit of a chance to shine as they were supposed to when they first came in. There was an opening six-man tag, Tony, where the elite faced the Seidel brothers and young Dante Martin of top flight. And Dante Martin is so good. He's so, so good for a 20-year-old kid, man. The things he's doing, he shouldn't be able to do. And one day, he's going to be the talk of the town. Um, after that, Christian Cage comes out. It's been confirmed that he's facing Omega at uh, All Out for the AEW title. And he goes, hey, and guess what? I'm facing you on Rampage for that Impact title. And at first, I'm like, oh, cool. They're going to do their first DQ finish. Or Omega will beat Christian two in a row. But then I thought about Brian Myers winning the Battle Royal to face the Impact Champion. And I said, you know what? I can see Brian Myers versus Christian Cage. And we'll talk about Rampage in a little bit. But I I think people are taking for granted the fact that Christian is wrestling. And I will never be that guy. Because Christian's been a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. And that I'm took so me uh, that took me by surprise about the Impact Championship being on the line. It also took me by surprise that Omega did the. Uh, are you saying Boo or Boo Earns? Essentially, yeah, so good. Oh wait, are you saying Whoa? Or are you saying No? 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 no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that that was fantastic. You got throw a Simpsons old school joke on there. I'm gonna laugh. I was saying no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I got some more stuff with uh 2.0. Um, they were 3.0 in NXT. Why did they lose a point? No, they were 3.0 on the Independence. They were ever rise in NXT. Yeah, they were 3.0 at first for well, like they're, they're... a couple weeks. They were 3.0 because that's their name. Like, that was their team name. And I guess they're like, you know what? We'll just be 2.0. Weird. Might not be 4.0. Like, you all leveled up or something, you know? Because 2 is better than 3. According to who? And what? Not math. <laughs> I said it. Well, like, if you have a chocolate bar and you only have to split it between two people, <laughs> there you go. that's more chocolate. And that's math, bitch. You're gonna so lose, now, use a uh, logic that would be on like a Hershey's commercial. <laughs> damn right, and that's that's math, by the way. So no, Tony, <laughs> math does dictate that two is better than three. Suck it. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about the commercial of the uh, 
take a piece of chocolate if you love yeah, sharing. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, not big on the uh, Tony Schiavone son thing. All right, but how do we feel about Paul White choke slamming QT Marshall? I really hope that this doesn't take up a spot of all out. I, I don't care because it'll be choke slam one two three. Still but, too much. But I'll say this. Your buddy boy there, Nick Camarado, body slamming Paul White would be a moment. I think you just do that then. But that doesn't have to be at all out. I mean, they might, <laughs> but I, I want to see QT Marshall get beaten up some more. Anything else on, uh, on Dynamite before we switch over to the Rampage? Actually, um, we did SmackDown first, but. Uh, let's see. So we talked about uh, Chris Statlander beat Nyla Rose. Statlander's good. Nyla and Vicky are not. I like Nyla. I'm not digging Vicky. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. I love Tony Schiavone with Britt Baker, but they're they're a golden pairing that I would have never guessed. So swapping over to Friday night. A couple hours ago, we had SmackDown. We got a new Intercontinental Champion. Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm, I'm here for it. I think it should have been Cesaro, but I told you. Same here. Didn't I, didn't I tell you? What did I tell you? I said, he's going to beat Rollins, and that'll be the only thing they ever give him. They gave him WrestleMania Backlash, and I would have never seen that coming. But it'll always just be, well, he beat Rollins at WrestleMania, and that'll be the thing that they hang his hat on forever. I really thought that the next IC champ should be Cesaro as well. I'm not opposed to uh, Nakamura holding it, but... You know what you could do here? A best of seven or a best of five with Cesaro and Nakamura. It's easy. There's built-in history. If you want to turn Cesaro heel... And be like, well, you're being a goof and I'm a purist. You can do that. Just let these dudes fight. I'm thinking more so Nakamura is keeping that until after the draft. And it's going to be just somebody in the mix of that gets the belt. I don't think Nakamura is holding that Intercontinental Championship by Survivor Series. I'll say that. Well, I guess we'll see. Three Profits beat Alpha Academy, Mysterious beat Dirty Dogs. We got a whole thing with what Baron Corbin. The... Hold on, it... hold on, no. Because we're... Look, I get it. Rude and Ziggler's time has passed, by the way. It just occurred to me now that Rue and Dolph, Rue Dolph, <laughs> they could have easily just been Rue Dolph, but whatever. Um, <laughs> they look like geeks because uh, the, the Usos are distracting Mysterios, but they... Dirty dogs still lose. Like they look like geeks, and I miss Bobby Roode was cool and Dolph Ziggler was cool. Go on. I agree. We had some funny stuff with Baron Corbin because Baron Corbin's great. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he says this is the last time he's going to be able to try to get money out of people. So if everybody in attendance just gives him a thousand dollars a piece. <laughs> I thought that was funny. He's laughing because he wants to like go to Times Square and just go. Hey, listen, if y'all give me a thousand dollars, like life will be good. Hey, if uh, I've said it before, if every person who subscribed, if everybody who subscribed to the YouTube channel donated a dollar a month on Patreon, we'd be in a completely different story here. We'd have some much better equipment going on and way more podcasts and. All sorts of things. So, remember, a dollar goes a long way. Just saying. Not asking for a $1,000 a month when it comes to that. But um, I thought that the Corbin stuff was great. I absolutely love this whole... The way that they're doing it. That's the thing. If they were to have continued to do this the way that they normally tend to do things, it wouldn't be interesting. But Corbin's so good at it. At playing that type of character of being like... (laughs) like he's not garnering any sympathy this guy knows how to be a heel so fucking well that instead of it being like 
uh, I feel kind of sorry for this guy, you know, that kind of deal. It's just <laughs> the obnoxiousness of like, look, like my wife left me and I, I'm going to go bankrupt. And so just give me your spare change. Just give me like a thousand dollars. It's funny because it's like, oh, he was the king of the ring and he's completely forgotten how lowly com- commoners, you know, get paid and act. And I love that. It's kind of like what's happened with uh, those like stimulus checks where they were like, that's good enough for you peasants to survive for a while, right? A couple hundred dollars. That's what you buy your your McDonald's value meals with, you poor bastards. We're rich people. We don't care. And then everybody else is just kind of like, is that how low you think of us? Goddamn, you know? <laughs> yeah, and then... I don't know if you really want to talk about the match. The match was a match, you know? It was a match. Yeah. Uh, Owens beat him after saying, if you beat me, I'll give you $1,000. Owens beat him. And then I wasn't expecting it. And it popped me. Because the man who who is broke and needs money steals money in the bank. It's kind of brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> And I think that that's so clever. <laughs> I thought that that was, if not the best thing on the show, probably the second best thing on the show. And the only other thing that could top it, well, I mean, outside of the fact that we got a new Intercontinental Champion, which is fun. But the opening, the John Cena promo with Roman Reigns, that was a pretty good segment. Yep. Because John Cena and Roman Reigns know what they're doing. And it's so exciting that they're just allowed to interact. And cut promos that feel natural to them and to show off that they are just in a different league in some ways than a lot of other people are. It's just natural. It's funny, and- John Cena got the one, two, three over during that. I you know which was weird to me that that's the route that they took. That the guy who's been championed sixteen times is just like, Yeah, but I just need to like hang in there and somehow beat you one, two, three. Where it's like I could see Edge doing that where it's like, I don't I may not be bigger than you, Roman, but I just have to last. But John Cena doing that felt weird. Even though I did enjoy John Cena looking at Heyman and going, he knows that I can get my ass kicked because I built Suplex City. I enjoyed that line. Um, I enjoyed Cena saying everything he said. Really. He called his teeth soap bars, which I thought was yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, Roman did the missionary line, and he goes, yeah, it wasn't good enough for Nikki Bella. I didn't like it. Because I think we should stay away from that. But at the same time, it got the reaction needed to. And John Cena fired right back. He goes, that's the best you got? You're going to attack me for a breakup I've been through? You're going to attack me for this, that? Like, no. I'm going to be the champion because you're not protected anymore because I'm John Cena. And I I love that. And he did a CM Punk reference where he said, uh, I'm going to win the belt. And I might even hop the bear kid and blow you a kiss. Because after I beat you, the champ is gone. Because I'll be in Hollywood. Which is kind of a heel thing to say, but like, whatever. I'm, I'm good with it. Weird that they reference CM Punk and Dean Ambrose. And, you know? Well, they didn't say Punk by name. They said Ambrose by name. Yeah, but Ambrose Cena's- by name. And then the, the whole jump the bear kid and blow you a uh, kiss is a CM Punk reference. And for context, what he said about Ambrose was, you've been protected your entire career. Hell, you were protected by the Shield. And you nearly ruined Seth Rollins' career. And hell, you you moved Dean Ambrose out of WWE. And I, I thought it was a good line. Because, hey, everybody knows Dean Ambrose wasn't happy. And we had nothing to do with Roman. But, hey, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, revisionist history type of thing. He's a heel, so just, you know, he did it. 
he's the reason why Moxley's over there, that kind of deal. And then you can kind of thank him and be like, oh, it's the reason why Moxley's had better matches, more interesting character development and everything. Okay, cool. I love it. So let's round things out, talk about Rampage. The premiere episode went down, I gotta say, almost entirely thumbs up on my end. How'd you feel about it? Damn near flawless. Isn't that amazing? That's like, the end of the episode, everybody. Thanks for that. <laughs> We're gonna break it down more than that. <laughs> like, they kick off the show with Christian Cage versus Kenny Omega for the world title. I'll say this from the onset. I think Dynamite has a better intro song. I think Dynamite will have the bigger feel because they'll have Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone, and they'll have Justin Roberts, whereas this show seems to have Dasha Fuentes, or, no, that's your WWE name, Dasha Gonzalez, and uh, they got four-man booth of Excalibur, Chris Jericho, Mark Henry, and Taz. Before we move on, we got to talk about the four-man booth. They should not have a four-man booth. I think I, I understand why. Because Excalibur it will be the link between Rampage and Dynamite. Taz is there to be the experienced color guy in case the other two start screwing up. Jericho is there to be the colorful, colorful guy because he did well at the start of the pandemic. And Henry is there because... He, they have given him money. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you got to spend this one. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they have given him money and he'll get better. He was a little long winded tonight to me. Yeah, I, I didn't like what Henry was bringing to the table in commentary, but it's his first shot at this kind of gig. So I'm perfectly willing to just be like, all right, just give him a little bit of a break. You know? Yeah. I, I just thought that, you had too many people on there. I think this would have been better without Jericho. And Jericho's and, fun, but he... I mean, I looked on Twitter and everybody's ragging on Jericho. They're all saying, like, this guy's got to shut up, and, and you know, he's rambling, and he's yelling too much and everything. Yeah, I just uh, think J- more Jimmy so... Van tweeted, he's the Adnan Verk of AEW, and I was like, oh. Uh, he's not doing the same kind of voice, though. <laughs> Jericho's not sitting there going, and we're talking today about the, uh, the ballpark hot dogs that are. <laughs> uh, well, Jericho was far very... into the left on the outside field. He's going over there, and we're just going to cut over to our sponsors and uh, the you Miller know... Light. <laughs> Miller Light. Grab a new Miller Light the next time that you're at the ball game. You know, I was talking to Jan the other day about that, and it's just. <laughs> Well, actually, the way that uh, I don't follow too much of other sports, but it seems like these past couple of years, what you do when you're a commentator and you're an announcer on that side of things is you don't realize that you're still being recorded and then you say something off the air that you have to apologize about. Um, look, I like Jericho. I think he was a little... Uh, he needed to be a little reeled in tonight. But it was fine. And I think the four-man booth trying to establish what they tried to establish. They're all trying to help each other, so they're not stepping on each other's toes, but they're all, it's more like, we're all friends, so we're going to start a band, right? But we don't mesh the way we want to. We got two guitarists, and, you know. <laughs> and maybe that'll come with time, but right now, that's how I feel about it. I still think that the best way that you pull off commentary is you either have a two-man booth, or, or, you know, a woman and a man, whatever, just two men, that's the idea, two commentators, but two-man booth, or three. And it depends on the personalities, too, because I really, still to this day, don't think Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone and Excalibur should all be on. It should just be Tony and Excalibur. I don't even know if you really need both of them at the same time. I think that they both serve the play-by-play role, basically. For Excalibur? Yeah, Excalibur is more so play-by-play, even. I get, you know, it's weird, because I think Tony and Jim are the hype guys. Because they've been doing it for so long. Whereas, the reason I think you think Excalibur is color, or not color, play-by-play, is because he 
literally knows all the names of the moves. Yeah, he's like the anchor. So it it does make him the anchor by default. But when you get like Taz and Henry and Jericho, eventually the color people start like competing for who's going to have the funny line and who's going to be able to one that has the actual big, Oh my God, that thing happened. That kind of deal. Jericho dominated that tonight. I don't think that Taz with a Jericho is able to be himself. Like he is on AEW dark. He's infinitely entertaining when it comes to dark. And I think that Mark Henry, of course, he's more soft-spoken and everything. So he's going to sit back and he's going to let Jericho dominate. And I want to hear more from Henry. I want to hear, even if it just became Excalibur and Henry, I'd be cool with that to try that out. Yeah. And I, like, I don't like the two-man boost that they do on Dark and Dark Elevation. So I think I'd keep a third if my option was Excalibur and Henry. I'd probably keep Jericho. But I think Taz will get phased out at some point. I think they just want him there because he's the color anchor, like Excalibur is the play by play anchor. So that was something um, I really loved, despite how it was obvious that this was how this was going to play out. I really liked the Miro and Fuego this whole match because. Going into it, you know Fuego's not winning that match. He's not winning the championship. But they did start it off really well with, he gets this Tornado DDT, the momentum's completely on his side, and they go, hey, if he wins by count out, he wins the contract. I love that. I love that. Because then you immediately go, okay, cool, they can do a count out. Mm -hmm. Because that's the the DNA of thinks. The fans kind of collectively realize that, and they start going like, oh, shit. He might be him by count out. That might be a whole thing. But of course, when Miro gets back in the ring and he ends up being able to turn things around pretty quickly after that, beats the shit out of Fuego. And taps him out in like 20 seconds. Yeah. Which is a dominant victory over a guy that hasn't won almost anything. And that's kind of how it should go. Thought that that was great. Thought it was even better that afterward, Tony Khan comes out with Sammy Guevara and they give him an actual contract. I I love it. Imagine that, a feel-good moment on TV and it doesn't feel forced. You think that they told him anything ahead of time? I don't think so. I don't think that they did either. Either I think that that was like, uh, hey, stick around in the ring afterward, we're going to do something, or, you know, like, just stay there for a minute. That kind of deal. But I thought that that's great. It's always fun when you see that kind of thing, too. Like, eventually, when they did the whole thing with... um. Please sign Cedric for Cedric Alexander. Triple H came out, did the thumbs up and whatever. I remember that being like, ah, it's so cool. Like this guy that just had this great match. Like, you know, and Fuego seems like he's a a nice guy. So it's nice to see him be like, all kind of like, fuck yeah, I got a contract. Like, you know, how old is he? He's probably early 20s, right? Yeah, he's got to be at least early 20s. Young enough that I can call him kid, which I don't like. Uh, then we had, this is a thing that I wasn't as big on. We knew that Britt Baker was going to be cheered because it's in Pittsburgh, but they play a little bit too much with these gray areas that sometimes I think that it just all gets a little bit too muddled. And the way that this went down, Red Velvet comes in as like full blown heel. She works heel in the match. Britt Baker wins as expected. Baker starts beating down Red Velvet again. Afterward, Chris Statlander comes out and she starts saving the day. And of course, everybody's booing because uh, you don't live it here. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know why that people do that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, you're from my area. I like it. And then Jamie Hayter comes out and aligns herself with Britt Baker. And it's it. just one of those things that I was just kind of like, well, so... Baker these past couple of weeks has been full blown baby face kind of, but heel, but eh, sometimes that can work really well. The tweener thing. I don't think that that was the best example of it, but I enjoyed the match and I'm a fan of red velvet. So even though she lost uh, another step forward, Baker 
by all rights should be champion right now, so no problem with her retaining. I'm I'm not familiar with Jamie Hader all that much, so So she was last on Dynamite on November sixth, twenty nineteen. Successful in a tag match against I believe it is Riho and one of the other Joshi women. Maybe Yuka Sakazaki, because that's my favorite name to say. So it could not have been, but Emi Sakura maybe or something. I don't know. No, because she teamed with Sakura. I guess we can figure this out by going to cage match. Jamie Hayter. Hater's going to hate. Uh, she was in AEW. Let's see. 2019 is what you said? Yep. So she and Sakura beat Riho and Shana. Shana, yeah. That's good. Not one of the jokes she put. Yeah. Hater's, hater's back. I like it. I like the pairing. She's all elite. She got the graphic. I loved everything about this. And then you get to the meat of the batter, which opened the show. That's Chris Cage. Impact World Champion. Beating Kenny Omega in a great match. In a great match. And it's one of those things. They sold me a ticket on the spear. Because Omega did so good on the two count there. And then as soon as he brought the chair out, I said, they're not doing a one on an angel. I had a chair with the referee really not going to. See, yeah, as soon as Christian hit the kill switch, I said, oh my god, he won the impact battle. And Kenny Omega just got pinned. And sure enough, Christian's 9-0. He won the impact title. And now he will be defending it next week against Brian Myers. He'll be at the impact tapings. This is really fucking cool. I pop so big for that. It's so weird to me that, like, there's so many things of I wouldn't have anticipated a couple years ago talking about certain conversations today, like obviously the whole pandemic and everything like that. But it's just so weird to me to be like, yeah, there's such a big partnership with impact and this new AEW, but also new Japan is there. Oh, and also like Christian's back. Oh, and also like edge is back too, but he's in Dota. It's and like so Mark Henry's wild. here and and there with Big, and Big Show Show's and here and by the way Daniel Bryan who by the way is also back just headlined WrestleMania and now he's gonna go to this AEW thing with Christian and Kenny Omega and oh Dean Ambrose is there and oh, by the way they're getting CM Punk like it's so crazy it's but it's so much fun think about it's it so much fun think about it just in this little bubble. Mark Henry interviewed new Impact World Champion Christian Cage after he beat Kenny Omega for the Impact Championship on AEW's B Show. While drinking a bottle of champagne, fully endorsed, licensed by Chris Jericho, which is face of it. Who was on commentary. There. Yeah, like, <laughs> like what? You told me that like four years ago, and I'm like, what shit are you smoking? What are you talking about? Christian is not wrestling anymore. Kenny Omega is not on an impact. And if it is, what is this AEW thing? And Mark Henry's an interviewer. And what? Like, just what? (laughs) It's so cool, isn't it? Like, and then it delivers in quality, and it's like, oh, that's so good. Similar kind of situation. I'm not going to spoil anything necessarily, but like I watched the movie Free Guy and at one point somebody jokes and they say something like, do you want me to give you the old Thanos glove? And I'm like, that's a thing now. Like people can reference Thanos's infinity gauntlet and go like, oh yeah, pop culture. I know about Thanos and the infinity. And it's like, motherfucker, you didn't know who Iron Man was. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. and it's so crazy so some of these things change it's just uh yeah uh, the world I don't know it spins around then it's turned it's, into hours <laughs> you know we could go in that direction again it's so good so Rampage it's got just basically it's another hour of dynamite 
it wasn't within, anything okay. super like different or whatever. It's exactly what I imagined that it would be. And ultimately, I do still think that we have way too much stuff going on right now between even just too much in AEW, way too much in WWE, way too much if you count just the both of them combined. But, you know, it's better than, uh, than AEW Dark at the very least because it's legit like here are people from that kind of side of things. I'll be checking it out as much as I can. I don't know how this is going to impact the uh, the hot tags going forward, but it everything's won't. in flux, so who knows? It won't. <laughs> We're going to do what we did right here. Well, you might end up doing shorter episodes of the hot tags. If that's the case, we'll be starting a full hour later. We might end up uh, doing things on different days. We might end up talking about stuff and... A different kind of capacity. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. But it's definitely not making it easier to do the hot tags, I'll tell you that. But today's episode was at least worth it to push that back a little bit further. I don't know if Next I'm gonna say week, that every single week. I here's what I told my friend. I said, Look, we can't expect this every week, but I do think the first month will be big. And that's not a bad thing, you know? I think we'll uh, we'll eventually settle into a groove where it'll be still great, just not mind blowing every week, which is good. But I also want to make this note: final tease. Um, the iconics are in Nashville. Hmm. Nashville is where TNA films. Hmm. Think of that what you will. Clearly, they're going to NWA. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we'll see how that plays out. And, of course, anything else that happens over the course of these next few days, we'll roll that into our discussions of everything else that's going forward, the next episode of the Hot Tags, the pay-per-view talk that we're doing, so on and so forth. Drop your comments below. Tell us your thoughts on everything that we talked about here and keep the discussion going there. And, um, you know, follow, like, share, favorite, subscribe, all that good stuff. Do that for Smart Cat Moment. Do that for fanboysanonymous.com. Hit up the Patreon for that one too. If you do want to check out more of like a review to a kill or you know, movie reviews or everything like that. We got some more content that we're gonna be having down the pipeline for that. We just recently did our uh, Batman the Long Halloween part two fan tracks. Check that so out if you're interested good. in that. And uh we might be doing one of those for Jungle Cruise. So if you want to check out that film and you don't really necessarily have a whole lot of like, oh, I really want to watch that. Well, you know, The Rock's in it, and we'll probably do a fan tracks. So maybe that'll be how you watch it. You'll watch it with us in the commentary in the background or something. But if you subscribe to these channels and you follow everything on Facebook and Twitter and you pay attention to the websites, you'll see when anything gets posted. You can follow me at Tony Mango. You can follow Rob at Dude Felice. Yep, and check me out on all social medias, including Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, uh, whatever it is, just search Dude Fleece. I am there. You can also go to DudeFleece.com. Maybe not tomorrow, but I, I, I do own that domain, and I will be working on that. And I'm excited. All right, everybody. That's, uh, that's it for episode 506. We will roll into next week with our pay-per-view talk with NXT TakeOver 36 and with SummerSlam. And we may we may do a live watch-along for the first dance. Might. It's kind of all going to depend. We're going to see how that plays out when it comes a little bit closer as to Friday. Long as, look, as long as like our personal lives aren't on fire, yeah. we might do it. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see you when we see everybody. But that's it for now. This has been another Smart Out Moment, and we're being counted out.